Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Revelations. I'm Pastor Chuck Reese, your show host and executive producer. This is a series all about evangelism and discipleship. We're hoping you get a couple of revelations that God is still working and there's a part for you to be playing within the body of Christ. Today we're in Citra, Florida, visiting the heart of Florida Youth Ranch, and with me is Dr. John Sweet. Dr. Sweet, thank you so much for letting Annette and I come and see what God's doing here at the ranch. We're delighted to have you. So I know you've been in this industry of orphan care and, and working with children for quite a while, and I know you've written some books on the topic, but give our viewers a little insight into the ranch and how God brought you here to this work. Well, I've been doing this for about 20 years and uh, working as a foster parent, recruiting foster families uh, in a couple of residential settings. And then for, for a couple of years before I came here, uh, traveling internationally to develop uh, staff at uh, orphanages around the world. So it was a pretty exciting thing. And we, we came here and there was a, 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 the heart of Florida needed some TLC. And my wife and I, it's just, uh, God touched our heart about coming here and doing the best we could to make this a premier program. Yeah, well, I know your wife and, and you have been doing this work for quite a while, and James talks about, you know, visiting the widows and the orphans in times of distress, so that's pure and undefiled religion as far as my Bible is concerned, right? So uh, That's it, yeah. Yeah, and you've been training and equipping people in this ministry as well. Talk a little bit about that, that the, the worker that's actually doing the work on the front lines that are toe-to-toe -to -toe with some of these kids. You've, you've learned some things over the years. Yeah, one, one of the things is that a lot of times people... Uh, you know, foster adoptive parents, uh, cottage parents, uh, orphanage workers ar around the world, people come to this work, yeah. they don't necessarily have any training for that. And, right. there, and there wasn't a lot of what I call scriptural based training that was out there. And right. uh, so I just uh, tried to dovetail the, some of the, the, the parenting techniques and some of the therapeutic mm -hmm. goals and models that we had out there with the scriptures. Right. And, uh, and, and God just really blessed that. And, and right. it's worked, uh, you know, God's word works around the world. It doesn't it does. matter yeah. what setting, if you put his word to work, it, it, it is effective. Yeah, that's amazing. So when we talk about ministering to children, some of these kids come from some situations that we couldn't even imagine. So you want to touch on that? Maybe some of the well, backgrounds? Well, there's, uh, you know, it, it's one horror story after another. You know, yeah. you, you, we get the call in, in the middle of the night of children who have just been severely beaten. I remember not long ago we got a call and, and uh, a child was at the hospital who had at the emergency room mm -hmm. would, had beaten literally black and blue from about mm -hmm. mid shoulders all the way to their knees. Right. And uh, you know, and no one wants a child in, in that kind of setting. Children need right. protection. Right. And not only protection, children have often been left neglected for days right. and days at a time without eating. And some, someone finds out about that and notifies uh, uh, authorities or people can respond to that. Right. And so we have children who have in some way have been neglected, abused, or, or just probably the worst of all is just to be abandoned. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's one thing to be abused, it's another yeah. to be neglected, but when someone just leaves you mm -hmm. and you have no one or nothing, that's a, right. that's a horrible place to be and it's a right. difficult place for children. So in reading your book and, and talking about this topic and of abused, abandoned, and neglected children, there's really that window in their, in their early teens, you really need to minister to them before it, they become adults. You know, a lot of times we talk about, you know, a, a piece of Play-Doh, you take yeah. that and, and just pound it and pound it and pound it and you can flatten that thing out. Right. Uh, but you can remold that thing right. uh, uh, until it gets hard. Right. And after a while it gets hard and dry and then it's, it's set in the way it's going to be. Right. And, and a lot of times that's the way kids' lives are. They, mm. they get so wounded and so hurt and there's a lot of trauma that is inflicted on children in their lives. Mm -hmm. And what we try to do is meet them at that place and mm -hmm. help them to learn to process that uh, trauma in a healthy environment. Right. So how would you describe the vision or the mission or the heartbeat of the ranch here? Well, the overall mission for the ranch is to work with children and families uh, to help the, the kids become productive adults. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of hurting families in, in the state of Florida, the Southeast, the United States, in the world. There's a lot of hurting families. And we want to be that part that steps in when a child needs a place to be right. uh, and can't be in a home to be able to give them the kind of support and the kind of environment right. uh, that they can uh, develop in a healthy way. Right. Well, what's great about this ministry is you're obviously working with local authorities. They're placing children here, but you also have an opportunity to gently lead them to Christ and, and use scripture and uh, demonstrate the gospel in word and deed. Talk about your approach there. 
Well, one of the things, you know, I, I believe that in lifestyle, what we call lifestyle evangelism, yeah. in a way that I want a, a child, they, they will often come to us and sometimes they've had some kind of background of faith. Right. Uh, other times it's a negative background or they don't right. have one at all. Right. And, you know, literally the old saying, we want them to see Jesus in us. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have to be able to read in us the care and concern that Christ has for them. And once they see that, it has a remarkable yeah. impact on them to be able to receive help right. from us and to r really, literally open themselves up right. to, to receive Christ. It's hard to argue against the fruits of the Spirit, right? Love, joy, peace, goodness, kindness, That's, gentleness, self-control, right? Time. That'll win it every time. <laughs> That's good. And, and you have some time. So are there, are there phases or seasons? Sometimes you don't know how long you may have a child uh, in, in in your care, right? And you know, and some some of that is out of our control, depending right. on the situation. But our goal is whether it's a, a, a week or a month or some we've had several years, right. we want to be able to speak life, to speak hope, to speak Christ into their life during that time. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, that that's the the heartbeat of what we do. All right. So I know you have some cottage settings here. Explain how uh, you're incorporating the ranch, some of the activities, and the cottage parents. How does it typically work a day in a life around here? Well, a, a typical day, we have four cottages. They're, they're, uh, we have cottage parents that are there with the children. Mm -hmm. They get up in the morning, get ready for school. They go off to a, a local area school. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have children already you know, from elementary age to high school. Mm -hmm. And so they go to school and then they come back in the afternoon. They have an hour of homework, the most dreaded hour of the day. You know, <laughs> you've got to do your homework. Right. And uh, then we'll have uh, whatever sessions and it's tailored for each child in each situation, right. but right. we'll have an activity time, a fun time, and uh, then if the child, need, if they're involved in therapy or groups or right. something like that, and then obviously we have a lot of church activities, a lot of community activities right. uh, for the kids to be involved in. Looking for some good house parents? Oh, we're always looking. You know, we're always looking for people who God may touch them to come and spend a season with us. It, uh, I, I really believe it does something in a life of a person who gives a season of their life to this. It'll, uh -huh. it'll, they'll never be the same. Yeah. Well, that's why we do the show, Revelations. We hope as we raise awareness of different types of ministries in the body of Christ doing the work that the body parts can be involved. So talk about ways that Christians can support and get involved with the ranch. Well, one of the greatest things that any Christian can do, even if they never come here, mm -hmm. is they can be a foster parent. They can be an adoptive parent. Mm -hmm. So I just want to encourage anyone that's uh, uh, listening to this or hearing this to be able to uh, look in your local area to ways that you can help become a mentor, become a foster adoptive parent. And then uh, particularly at the ranch, uh, there's a lot of ways that you can help us. You can obviously give financially, or you can be involved in a work group or uh, individual that comes here and does work actually on our property, all kinds of skill levels that we need. And uh, then you can become a mentor to one of the children here if you live in an area where you're close enough to, to work with us here, uh, which uh, gives you an opportunity to speak directly into that child's life. But uh, you know, there's a number of ways that you can help and obviously, you know, we just pray that people get involved in some level. Yeah, and that's the Holy Spirit's job, right? We're all different body parts, and we need to just ask the Lord, hey, what's my part in this? And I think that's the quickest prayer God loves to answer, is that's showing it. you what you can do, right, to right. be His hands and feet. Well, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing, is God has His plan. And, yeah. you know, we don't, I, you never know exactly how God's going to use you, because right. the way you think He is <laughs> may not be the way. And right. I'm sure that's a lot of people have come into ministry, and and those kind of things. But God, you can be part of that plan. Yeah, amen. So why do you do what you do? Well, you know, it, it, uh, one of the things that started us off in this was a situation that happened to me a, a number of years ago as a local pastor in Tennessee. Uh, I was part of a group called the Foster Care Review Board and we had uh, interviewed this young man and he made the statement, why am I in jail? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I was part of the group trying to answer that question and I knew he had just, uh, his story was he had been abandoned. And so uh, having, having said that, I, I knew that uh, he hadn't done anything to be worthy of being in jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, honestly, that day, that night, uh, something began to work in my spirit. I got up in front of my church and collapsed and got up and said, this can never happen in our town again. Mm -hmm. And I got heavily involved in recruiting and training, being a foster parent, being an emergency placement, so that no longer would children ever have to be held in a holding center 
that was literally a juvenile detention center. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that, that was my start and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, just the fruit of God touching what we've done over the years has kept me moving. Yeah. Amen to that. Is there anything else the Lord put on your heart to share with us and our viewers about the ranch? Well, the, the, the ranch is a special place. The kids get to come here. Uh, it's out of their norm. It's, and most of them do uh, come from city settings or, or uh, urban settings. And so it's an opportunity to come to slow life down quite a bit. And uh, we, you know, this afternoon, their kids in here will ride horses. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll have interaction with some of the things on the farm. And uh, it's, a, it's, an ex it's a great place for kids uh, who are in out-of-home placement. So we're excited about the potential that we have to bring kids here and be just a small part of what God's doing in the work and hurting children around the world. Yeah, and then, you know, you get a chance to minister to the entire family, right? It kind of right. ripple effects out there a little bit. Absolutely, yes. We have yeah. uh, some of our counseling, we'll have uh, uh, individual sessions with the children, and then we'll also have sessions with, we bring the family in, trying to keep that family together. Restoration, and, and hopefully that's the goal, right? That's it. Amen, God's a God of restoration. That's it. Amen. Well, stay tuned. We're going to get some more interviews so you too can learn about Heart of Florida and the Youth Ranch here and how you can play a part in these last days to co-labor with this ministry and, and make an impact. I want to invite you to take a look at our website, revelationstvseries.org. It's produced by Horizon Media Studios. It's a 501c3 media ministry, and what we're doing is helping other ministries tell their story. Homeless shelters and children's homes. Bible colleges, seminaries, mission sending agencies. With your help, we can continue to help tell their story to inspire the world, to shine their light, and let God get the glory for the work that's being done in advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ.